God first. God will take care of the rest. But if you put money and pleasure and power first, you're going to be deceived. You're going to come up empty. You're going to come up shorthanded. You can be rich, but if you're without God, what do you have? You have nothing. The Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy and said, instruct those that are rich in this world's goods not to be proud. Don't fix your hopes on the uncertain things that money can buy. Fix your hope on God. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And this generation of young people, able to express themselves more than any generation, and you're expressing yourselves that you're deceived, and you're blaming the older generation when actually the older generation has been deceived too. And we've been deceived by a supernatural power called the devil. So let's put the blame where it is, on the devil. You know, depression can become very great in adolescence. When you're at the age between about 16 and 22 or 23, you can have terrible periods of depression, a sense of insecurity. If you don't have a goal or a motive or a purpose or a meaning for living, you can be preoccupied with nothingness and you can be absolutely empty. And this leaves you depressed. Sometimes you're depressed and sometimes you have a ego trip, egotism, and you try to show off and try to show that you're a man in this way or that way by doing eccentric things to try to gain your place in the spotlight of your little world. Young people feel a sense of failure and so they are very lonely. An actor wrote in a national magazine last week and he said, I've reached zero level. He said, you know, I go on the stage and I act, or I go before the cameras and I act, and they think I'm a great guy. He said, I've been nominated for the Academy Award. I've had all of the money that a man could make, but he said, when I get home, he said, I reach zero, take the mask off, and he said, I'm the loneliest guy in the world. He said, if I only had somebody's hand to hold, that really loved me. You can hold the hand of Jesus. He loves you. He'll forgive you. He'll come in and be your friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He wants to come and hold that lonely hand of yours tonight. He wants to come and make you have purpose and meaning in your life. Then I think that young people are searching for a challenge. And you know, we want a challenge. That's one reason we like football. That's one reason we've gone sports crazy. We like a challenge. Man was built for a challenge. Why not also have a spiritual challenge? A challenge to change the lives of men and women. Take the loneliness away. Take the sin and the guilt away. Why not the challenge to follow Jesus Christ and change the world with love instead of hate? You can sense Christ, you can feel Christ. And what a wonderful thing it is all day long to have a, a power about you, a strength about you, a glow about you. No matter what the circumstances, maybe in a hospital room or wherever you are. And you can overcome those feelings of despair and depression and physical handicap by a greater power, the power of the Holy Spirit that comes to live within. How wonderful to have a faith to believe, a faith that could change the world, and certainly a faith that could change your world and your life. The Bible says that we are sinners. Now, you know, I believe that young people need to be told the truth. And I don't think in my generation we've gotten over to them the truth. What is the truth? The truth is that you have inherited a deadly disease and it's gonna kill you. That disease is called sin, that's a disease, a spiritual disease. And the Bible says the result, the wages of sin is death. Now you have a disease. 
There's absolutely no cure for your disease. It's going to kill every one of you. It is appointed unto man once to die. There's only one possible cure, one total cure. And that's why Jesus Christ came down to this earth. He came and shed his own blood that a cure might be provided by God for you. It's the only cure for the disease that we all have. You've got it whether your face is black or whether it's white or whether it's brown or whether it's yellow. Whatever language you speak, whether you speak with a northern accent or a southern accent, whatever you are, whoever you are, you've got the disease. And it's going to kill you. It'll kill you physically. You're going to die. It'll kill you spiritually because when you die, your soul is going to go out into eternity lost and separated from God according to the teachings of Jesus. A lost soul wandering about in outer darkness, lost, lost from God, lost from your loved ones, lost from everything good and lovely and right and holy. Jesus described that situation as hell. There are many of you here tonight that are lost souls living in hell right now, a hell on this earth. But if you're, if you're outside of Jesus Christ, the Bible says you're infected with this disease. The wages of the sin is death. The soul that sinneth shall die. You're under the sentence of death. You're just awaiting the execution. There's only one cure one serum, one medicine that'll work. God guarantees it. I know it'll work. It's worked in every generation for tens of thousands of people that have put their trust and their faith in Jesus Christ.